You know, it's also a scary world because as much as 40% of audits in 2022 are deficient, David. This is the headline in the Wall Street Journal. Accounting watchdog expects deficiencies in 40% of public company audits in 2022. Chair Erica Williams calls findings completely unacceptable. This is up from 34% in 2021 and 29% in 2020. So they inspected a lot of firms, 157 audit firms, and they reviewed portions of 710 audits. So it's a big sample size, and 40% of them have deficiencies. And these are significant deficiencies, deficiencies that are so significant that the PCAOB says that the auditor should not have issued its opinion. They didn't collect sufficient evidence to back up their opinion. Audit firms are blaming high staff turnover, reliance on less experienced staff, and remote work, according to the PCAOB, although they don't collect data specifically on what caused the underlying audit issues. They just ask the firms, what are the challenges you are facing? And that's what the firms are saying. They're saying that high staff turnover, less experienced staff, and remote work adoption. I think the, the remote work adoption, man, you know, that's always the scapegoat. Didn't the chairman or, or chairwoman, when she at the press conference, call those out as excuses from the firms? She, <laughs> Did she? she? I, like I didn't, I didn't the, watch the uh, yeah, press Yeah, I conference. think she referenced it as, as excuses. And then she goes on to say that the, the main cause is like some firms lack any quality control systems, even a monitoring procedure to check that workers have adhered to professional standards in their accounting and auditing. Right? Yeah. So, so basically, it's like, go do this audit and nobody ever checks it internally. Now, it's worse it's worse in China and Hong Kong. The PCOB did its first ever inspections of Chinese audits, audits of Chinese companies, and found that KPMG and PwC had deficiency rates of 100% and 75% respectively. 100% deficiency. 100%? Yeah. Yeah. KPMG had 100% deficiency rate in China. Well, wouldn't you just get lucky and do one well, it was, correct? It was only, they only reviewed eight audits. But I mean, okay, okay. like four, it doesn't say how it was broken out, but let's say four for KPMG, four for PwC, I'm, I'm guessing, right? So all four were deficient for KPMG and three out of four for PwC, if that's how it was broken out. So not a good look oh. for the audit profession. It says the audit clients that receive faulty audit are not disclosed by the PACOB. Like, like, I get the whole market impl implications of this, but like maybe that's the way change happens, right? Yeah. Like, like, have the news article that lists 700 companies or whatever it is, 300 companies with bad audits. Like, cause chaos in the market. That's the way you get changed. Yeah. Yeah, by hiding this, by shielding these companies, there, there's, like, there's no, there's no real penalty. And, and the financial penalties that the PCAOB issues are minuscule, like $10 million a year in financial yeah. penalties for a multi- billion dollar industry. So they, they, they have no teeth, right? Like maybe, yeah, maybe naming and shaming the companies with the bad audit, audits. But then these companies would say, well, it's our auditor that, you know, did the bad job. I don't know. But I agree with you. Like this, and, this isn't sustainable. And that goes by a bigger question because the whole reason the PCAOB was created in, tw in 2002 was because of the whole Enron Anderson mess, right? So now it's, it's 21 years later, they're coming out with these big press conferencing, how it's completely unacceptable, the state of audit. Yeah. And I'm like, well, what have you been doing for 20 years? Well, <laughs> like, they didn't do much like, for 20 years. You're supposedly being the oversight for 20 years. Like, some of this is on you, too. You just can't say it's these big firms. Like, yeah. you're part of the problem. Well, um, I'll, I've said it before. I'll say it again. The way that you fix audit is that you make auditors truly independent. They should be hired by an independent third party, not by the companies they audit. And they shouldn't be doing consulting work. They should be completely separate and only do audit and not be a part of these big consulting firms, which is what the big four have become. They are consulting firms that happen to do audits. And that's a huge conflict of interest, no matter how you skin it. And I think the PCAOB is a conflict of interest, right? And I feel like you talked about this on the podcast a year and a half ago. Like there's people that they're, they're senior members at these big audit firms and they go to work for the PCAOB, then they go back to one of the firms there's this like this dance that happens and like who's going to rat out the firm you might go take a job at but it's yeah i don't know the whole thing's uh, pretty broken but 40 like, percent, like at what point do we start panicking 40 percent's pretty high well and the, and the question 
a really good question that Michael asked in the live chat is, what's the threshold for an audit to be deemed efficient? And this is not clear. It's not clear based on PCAOB's communications what exactly that means. Like, how deficient does it have to be? So maybe if they gave us more information on this, like just how bad the audits are, then we would know. They do have two different types of deficiencies. There's like a, a really bad one and a less bad one. It's a good point, Michael. Romeo says the PwC Australia MARA law leaks sort of proved that a lot of the reasons big clients stick with large firms despite deficiencies is for, quote, the added benefits, unquote. Tim says PCAOB are just disgruntled B4 ex auditors. Disgruntled. So actually, David, the, the PCAOB has done something to increase transparency a bit. There is now a website where you can search PCAOB inspection reports by how many screw ups an audit firm made. They have put 3,700 PCOB inspection reports online. It's called the Firm Inspection Reports page. Uh, I haven't actually looked at this yet. I've got it up on the screen for our live stream viewers. You can search by deficiency rate. So I could actually say, okay, who had a really high deficiency rate? More than 50%. KPMG in Japan, they had a 67% Part 1A deficiency rate out of three audits. So two out of three failed. Let's see, who has the highest? Postal Weight in Netterville in the U.S. had a 100% deficiency rate, but they only had one audit reviewed. So just for somebody like EY. Yeah. Right, so EY is going to do, in theory, how many audits this year? Uh, I mean, hundreds. Thousands? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Probably, yeah, and it could the PCOB be. PCOB might review two or three of them. Well, more than that for the big firms. Okay, so here's 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 some uh, firms right. with more audits reviewed than just one. Witham, Smith, and Brown had 17 audits reviewed for 2021 and had a 76% Part 1A deficiency rate. RSM, 15 audits reviewed, 73% deficiency for 2017. Oh, I can do the year. I can filter by the year, too. So, okay, here we go. So for, for firms with more than, let's say, five audits reviewed in 2021, let's look at the deficiencies. Malone Bailey, yeah, they had an 86% deficiency rate. So there's some firms out there that are like not doing well based on what the PCOB thinks they should be doing. Like really bad, right? Like if the PCOB is setting the standard for what a quality audit is and you're getting 70, 80% of your audits marked as deficient, there's a problem there. But I mean, this just keeps happening year after year after year, right? So how, how do you improve this? How does this get better? It's getting worse. So the question is, how does it get better? I don't have an answer to that. I don't have an answer. <laughs> it sounds like yeah. okay. it, it, it can't be AI. It, oh, it's AI. You know, just throw out the, the simple answer. But the, what's interesting well, is they, they talk I about mean, the uptick in failures. Maybe AI will do a better job. Sorry, go ahead, there, David. There's a delay. Oh, I was going to say, they, uh, they talked about the uptick in failures. And then they said some of it is, quote, unquote, mm -hmm. basic audit steps sufficiently. They're just not executing the basic audit steps. Wow. Like it's corner cutting. Yeah, I, and I wonder how bad it is. I would love to see examples. Like, does it mean they're not confirming bank balances? They're relying on client information? Like, you know, EY was not confirming bank balances at Wirecard in Germany. Like, basic stuff they weren't doing. Yeah, they say, such as the use of non-credible data to support conclusions. You're right. So like, basically, like, that's a pretty... Data? And I think usually that means relying on client-provided information. If you don't independently go out and confirm this stuff, how do you know that it's real? 